Welcome everybody. This is a quick little video about lean concepts that we're going to use on a daily basis. So we'll get one of these videos every day. I'm here in California. I'm in my parents' garage and this is the only place where I could find a whiteboard. And so today we're going to talk about flow. So right now I, I just need to explain uh, for myself and for all of us, there's three really key concepts in construction. There's flow, uh, there's pull, and there's push. So I'm not talking about what some would call systems thinking, like science or manufacturing or in, in scientific systems. I'm talking about in construction. Flow is where workers or trades can work from area to area in a consistent and relatively unhindered flow and be able to finish work as they go without too many interruptions in an even pace and in an even sequence. Pull, that's where one contractor, uh, whoever's going first, will, whatever pace they're going, whether they're going slow or whether they're going fast, will pull contractors behind them. And when this contractor starts is determined by when this contractor completes. And that's pull. So that means they're not overlapping, right? But when this contractor goes a little faster, this one can go faster when they slow down and goes a little slower, right? So that's pull. Flow, they're both going at the same speed, okay? And then push, that might be where this contractor, right, is supposed to be done, uh, but they're not. Uh, but this work is supposed to start and it, the general contractor will push or whoever it is, it could be a multi-prime contractor or a trade partner, will push these contractors on top of each other and that creates variation and increased crew counts and increased material inventory. And so when we talk about flow and construction, there's uh, we need to understand in comparison to flow, pull, and push. So again, flow, everyone's going the same pace. Pull, you're going the pace of the first contractor, whether they slow up or, slow up or, or speed up, and then push, regardless of whether this one's done, you're just pushing people on top of each other. So we always want to flow. When we can't flow, we want to pull, and we really want to stop pushing, because in construction, this just doesn't work out. So a couple of really key things for us in construction is when we have crews on the project site, it is better for them to hold their flow and their start dates versus just pushing and filling empty areas. And so I'm just gonna talk about a schedule. The other day uh, we had, I was working with a civil contractor where there was area one, two, and three. And there was one crew that did one activity and each one of these were days. One activity and then they would go to area two for that activity and area three, right? And then they would have to go uh, that same crew and do back to area one and do a second air activity in the sequence and then down to three. And then that crew, when it was available, they went to do the third activity and then uh, they did that third activity in area one, two, and three. And so this doesn't look like it flows, but it flows because we have crew flow. Uh, when we have, uh, when we use systems like tact planning and you have a tact sequence, the reason that it's really important to show schedules in that kind of a sequence is because you can see all three types of flow that uh, are pertinent to our schedules, right? So let's say that this is a normal tact plan and these are all activities and this is an area. So this is area one, two, three, right? This is contractor A, B, C, D, and E. A, B, C, D, and E, A, B, C, D, and E, and then these are the dates. So this is week one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see the workflow, the trade flow for contractor A or B or C or D or E, and you can see the logistical flow. It goes from area one, two, to three. That's three types of flow. Now, in most scenarios, the, each one of these types of flow is kind of equal. But in construction, 
the flow of the trades through the different areas, in my opinion, is one of the most important considerations. And it's called, and I'm almost done here, one process flow. Okay, you've heard of one piece flow. And so uh, let me see if I can do this with my hands here really quickly. Pretend my, my right arm here, that these are pieces of equipment. Actually, I'll just do this on the board. These are pieces of equipment, right? Um, in a manufacturing plant, when you say one piece flow, that piece of material comes through that assembly line and comes out to the end and they finish that one piece. Or in manufacturing, a lot of times they have the horseshoe uh, little pods and these are like little stations, these are tools. And the piece of material will come from station to station until it's done. So they're working on one piece. Uh, but in construction, and let's pretend these are the, the resources, the workers and the machines. Instead of uh, material coming through one piece flow, right? The location stays the same and in construction, the process, the equipment and the resources flow through the project site. So it's not one piece flow, it's one process flow. So what I, I wanna give us two things that we can learn from this. When you see blank spaces here, so that's a, this is a blank spot, blank spot, blank spot. If you hear kids, that's because I got 11 kids, but blank spot, blank spot. Superintendents will want to push us into these open areas just because they want to look busy because it's an open area. We can't do that. When we want flow, we have to have everybody going the same pace. All of these contractors going the same pace and we can't randomly push people into areas out of flow. The other thing that we have to do is we have to reduce our work and process and focus on the work that we have. So if we're in this day right here, we need to focus on completing that work when we're there. If we're down here in this one and we're within that week, we need to get C, B and E, C, B and A done in that week when we're there and finish it before we go to these next weeks. So those are one, two of the biggest things that we need to consider in construction is holding the dates, not pushing, and finishing as we go within the weeks of time that we have. So I'll close this out by saying we have one process flow, right? And we always want work to flow as our top priority. When we can't do that, we want to pull work and we never want to push. Now in systems thinking, you might have to push, but in construction, you never push. So my message is get everyone going the same pace. Do not randomly push people into empty areas and finish as you go. And this is our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it.